In the latest DaVinci Resolve 20.1 update, the Split Tone OFX is introduced. And I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks of how you can use this tool more effectively. Hey guys, I'm Dan, your friendly neighborhood colorist. And in this video, we are going to be looking at the Split Tone OFX, which was previously available in the Film Look Creator. But as of version 20.1, the Split Tone OFX is its own OFX, so that you don't have to use the Film Look Creator in order to use this Split Tone adjustment. And the Vinci Resolve has also added a few more characteristics and features to this Split Tone OFX. Right now in the color page, I have a clip that is color managed and also color corrected. So I'm just going to apply the Split Tone to apply the split tone OFX, you can go into your effects palette on your top right and scroll down to film emulation and split tone. Just drag it into your split tone node. And within the split tone OFX, there are three modes. The first mode is natural. The second one is strong. And we also have a custom mode. By default, it will be on the natural mode with an effect already baked in. So if I turn this node on and off, you will see a difference from the split tone. But before we go into the different modes and the adjustments, let's go into the color space override settings first. Within this section, you can set your input and output color space and gamma. And by default, it will be using use timeline, which is whatever you set your project level or timeline level color management to. To check for that, you can go to your project settings on your bottom right and go into color management. Right now, my timeline color space is set to DaVinci White Gamut slash intermediate. So everything here that says use timeline will be using the exact same timeline color space. But just for safety, you can also set it yourself by going into the input and selecting on DaVinci White Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate, and output to the same DaVinci White Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. And I have to do this setting because my working color space right now is DaVinci White Gamut. In my IDT, I'm going from Sony s 3 into DaVinci White Gamut. And in my ODT, I'm going from DaVinci White Gamut to Rec.709. So everything that sits in between here is working in DaVinci White Gamut. If you're not using a working color space, then you can set this to Rec.709 Gamma 2.4 and for output also Rec.709 Gamma 2.4. With that out of the way, let's have a look at the three different modes of the split tone. And to clearly and accurately display what these three modes are doing differently, let's use a grayscale ramp to show the differences. So the grayscale ramp will show me values from 0, which is pure black, right up to 100, which is pure white. And if I drag in my split tone OFX, there will be a default adjustment being made. Right now, the split tone mode is set to natural. And if I increase the strength slider, it will add the effect in the highlights and also in the shadow. As for the pivot slider, it will pivot where the split tone starts, such as if I move it to the right, it will pivot from higher in the highlights instead of down here in the middle. And if I move it to the left, it will go down to the shadow area. So it will show more effect in the highlight and less of the shadow split tone effect. So usually when you're doing this type of split tone effect, you will want to set your pivot point to middle gray. And the middle gray for DaVinci White Gamut, which is the color space that I'm working in right now, is 0.336. So this is the exact middle gray pivot point for this color space. And the last slider we have is the hue angle, which will change the hue of the complementary colors in your shadow and highlight, maintaining that split tone just with different type of hues. So we can go for something like this, which is more of a teal and orange sort of color, or you can go for the default, which is set to 20, and it's more of a teal and greenish yellow in the highlights. Moving on, we have a protect neutrals checkbox right here. And what this does is to prevent the split tone to be applied to neutral colors. Neutral tones are anything without any saturation in it. So you can imagine it as the black, gray and whites. So if I check this protect neutrals box, everything in my grayscale RAM will be removed because the grayscale RAM itself doesn't have any saturation to begin with. So technically this checkbox is very useful to desaturate the unsaturated areas when you're adding a split tone effect so that it doesn't look too fake. But without checking this checkbox, let's copy over this split tone node and apply it to a clip that we have here. So I'm just going to paste the split tone. If I turn this node on and off, there's a very nice natural split tone. Everything still looks pretty natural to me. And if we do it on a different clip, everything still looks pretty nice. We have a bit of a split tones in the shadow here, such as a bit more blue. And in our highlights, we have a very faint yellowish or greenish tint. I feel that this effect is pretty nice. 
So that is for the natural split tone mode. Let's switch over to the next mode, which is strong. And straight away, you can tell in the strong mode, comparing it with the natural, the natural mode tries its best to maintain your white point, your middle gray pivot point, and also your black points to be neutral. But in the strong mode, more colors are being pushed in your whites. Additionally, when you're using the strong mode, there isn't a protect neutrals checkbox available. But this mode is still quite smart to a sense where it tries to maintain your pivot point at neutral middle gray and also your black point. So if I reduce the effect a little bit here, we don't have to go full power. You can see that the only point that is being different or reacts differently here is the highlight where there are more colors being pushed to it and it's not maintaining at a neutral point. And this was also the version of split tone available in the film look creator previously. Let's test this mode on our clips. So I'm going to copy this node and paste it on this. It's a totally different kind of look because as you can see the blues in my highlights in the sky is totally being overpowered by that warmth being ejected into the highlights. But I still get the same blues in the shadow where you have that split toning of blue but my highlight area such as this bright area here is being overpowered with that warm tone so i can increase the strength to show you more of it if this is something that you are going for but if you want to maintain the blues in the sky there is a way to go around that i'm going to show you later on but let me copy this same effect and paste it onto this where we have a lot of whites in this mount fuji area right now if you use the strong mode it will totally overpower the white area. And this is also one of the reasons why the split tone in the film look creator previously, which is this version of it, wasn't really that user friendly because of the lack of control. But in the new split tone OFX, they came up with a new mode, which is custom. In this custom mode, you can determine how much split tone you want in the highlights and also the shadows exclusively so you don't have one slider to determine the strength of both you have two different sliders here on top of that you can also tweak the different hues of split toning yourself so let's say in this case in my shadow i want to do a teal and orange so i'm going to increase the strength in the shadow with a little bit of adjustment in the hue going right here for more bluish teal and in my highlight let's say if i don't want to to overpowering highlights adjustment, I can just reduce it to a very low level and adjust the hue to a bit more orangey, orange, something like that. In fact, I think I'm going to increase the effect in the shadow a bit more to somewhere over here. And we also have the option to protect our neutrals when we are in the custom mode. So if I copy this effect over to my first clip where we have this sky here, I can maintain the color of the sky while injecting the split tone in the shadows. So if I turn this node on and off, you see that it creates a very nice effect that you have full control of when you're in the custom mode. If I paste it on this second clip, I get the very nice whites while injecting blue in the shadow. So this is a very useful tool if you understand how you can use it individually without being tied to anything. So if I feel that my whites are a little bit too yellowish, I can also choose to protect neutrals so that everything in my whites will remain white and also in the blacks, it will remain black. So it really cleans up the middle. If I turn this split tone on and off, you see that most of the effect is being injected into the shadow area without affecting the highlight too much. So all in all, I think this split tone OFX is very useful for the beginners out there who hasn't really grasped how to create a look using the primary color wheels in DaVinci Resolve. So it's a very quick and easy way to create a split tone or inject a creative look into your grid without having to fiddle around with the different settings and adjustments. But of course, there are limitations to this OFX, which there are some type of split tone looks that you can't achieve. If you want to know more about how you can create a saturation split toning, you can watch this video. And that's all for this video. If you learned something new, please drop a like and subscribe to watch more. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.